for me, there's nothing about mobile gaming that sounds like something I would largely want to do. There's nothing about your average phone that screams top tier gaming experience. You've got no buttons, a screen that's in an aspect ratio that is not conducive to games. You usually have some subpar speaker system. There's nothing about this that says gaming. And yet, gaming on mobile phones is not just big, it's actually gargantuan. It is one of the largest gaming markets you could possibly imagine at this point. And the biggest reason for that is really simple. It's because you almost can't overestimate the importance of ease of access. We've all got a smartphone in our pocket. Games on mobile are often free or very inexpensive. Therefore, loads of people are gaming on their phones. And it's that point of ease of access that I want to talk about in this video. The primary place that I game is on this computer here, which is actually over here to my side. This is where I game for the most part, this is where I film, and this is where I edit my content. However, my favorite way to game is not here in front of a desk. It's actually on a handheld, sitting on the couch in front of the TV where I can kind of multitask, where my fragmented brain, my dual stream consciousness can be at its happiest state where I can be playing something like Breath of the Wild, The Legend of Zelda, while a documentary is running on the television that I can be listening to slash watching while I'm playing on my handheld. That is my favorite way to enjoy a game for whatever reason. I think that's the strongest feature of either mobile gaming or just gaming on a handheld. It's the ease of access. You can bring it with you and use it wherever you happen to be. And that experience just isn't something I can do with PC gaming. Well, that's not generally something I can do with PC gaming. So what I want to do today is I want to highlight for you a tiny bit of software that for some of you people out there that may uh, have an NVIDIA graphics card, this may be a really cool thing for you to try out. So let's sidestep here slightly and talk about game streaming. So you've got Stadia, you've got Game Pass, you've got several others. For me, my experience with these streaming services have been really hit or miss. Using Game Passes in home streaming uh, on my Surface Duo, I get a lot of latency and I get a lot of just not great performance out of the game streaming. It's not something that is enjoyable to me primarily because of the input latency. You turn and you stop turning and your character keeps turning for an extra beat because there's that latency between button press and action happening in game. Some of us are more susceptible and more sensitive to feeling that latency than others. You may play and feel just fine and adjust to it. You may play and hate it even more than I do. But for me, latency is an absolute fun killer. So Game Pass is kind of out the window for me, for me right now because it just doesn't run that well for me. Stadia is a little bit better, but still not something I'd really enjoy playing. For me, the only way that I ever stream games that is fun for me or enjoyable for me is when it's happening locally, which is to say my computer is playing the game and streaming the video feed to another device and playing it that way. So for a while, I had used the streaming system that is built into Steam, and it worked pretty well, but here recently I stumbled across something called Moonlight, and Moonlight takes in-home streaming to an entirely different level, and it works supremely well. And here's the cool thing, in order to use Moonlight, really all you need is an NVIDIA graphics card because it takes advantage of NVIDIA's hardware to do the streaming. So the first thing you need to do if you have an NVIDIA graphics card is download the GeForce experience. And this is a bit of software that you just have to have in place for this to work. And if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you should probably already have it in place because it gives you these nifty overlays where you can save instant replays of your video, you can broadcast live, you can just straight up record whatever it is you're playing. There's all kinds of cool features that you get with the GeForce experience, but it also enables what I'm about to show you. So the next thing you need to do is you need to go to the device that's going to be receiving the stream and you need to download Moonlight. So there's a couple different ways you may need to do this. If you're streaming from one computer to another on that other computer, go to moonlight-stream.org, go to client downloads, 
find whatever it is you're running. In this case, it would be Windows if it's another computer and download that Windows installer. If you are on Android, the process is also pretty simple. You're just going to want to go download Moonlight Game Streaming out of the Play Store. And once you've got this downloaded, when you open up this Moonlight app, it is crazy simple to get set up. Once you open it up, it should show you your computer, whatever you're going to be streaming from as long as you're on the same network. Once you select that, there's going to be a pop-up on the computer that you're streaming from to punch in a code that you will see on your mobile device or on your laptop. You punch in that code and you're done. You've got access to your computer and all the games that are on said computer. And here's a really cool feature here. These games that are shown here are ones that can just launch straight from this. If you don't see the game you want to play on it though, you can simply click Steam. And at that point, you will get the Steam Big Picture layout. And just so you can see this, down here in the bottom right-hand corner is the actual feed running on my Surface Duo. So you can see what kind of latency I'm seeing here. At that point, you can go into your library and you can play whatever game you want to play. And the latency on it is incredibly, incredibly small. And yes, this entire experience is compatible with a controller like the one that I have here. I'll link to this controller in the description down below. This is a Bluetooth controller. And anything I just showed you there, you can totally play those games with this controller as long as the game has controller support itself, which most PC games do have that controller support. And the primary reason I'm suggesting to use Moonlight over Steam's streaming is because the latency is essentially non-existent. I could not believe how well this actually played. From the time I hit that button to action on screen, it is imperceivably small in my experience. And what's really cool here is you can take your laptop, go to moonlight-stream.org, and download for Windows, and do this from your computer to your non-gaming laptop. Use keyboard and mouse just like you're gaming on your gaming PC, and it works astonishingly well there as well. So for me, playing something like Valheim on my Surface Pro 7, yeah, I can do it locally on my Surface, but I've got to lower the settings, I've got to lower the resolution a bit to get it to run well. Well, if I just stream it from my gaming tower, it looks fantastic and it works shockingly well. So that's about it for today's video. I just wanted to kind of bring some awareness to Moonlight Streaming as an app because a lot of people aren't using it. A lot of people might want to use it if they knew what it was. So let me know if this is something you're going to be interested in giving a shot. It's free. It takes five minutes to set up and it works really well. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments down below. What do you think about using this to stream games to your Surface Duo or to your mobile device or to your laptop? I'd love to know your guys' take in the comments down below. I'll see you on the next one and until next time, stay nerdy my friends.